Time to get ready to start our last chapter, chapter eight, uh, complex numbers. There are quite a few instructors who, when they teach trig, skip this section and assume that you all know what's going on. Uh, I'm not gonna skip it, but I'm gonna go through this at a decent pace because uh, it's one of those things that you all remember. And the complex numbers, you know, there you go. If I had a situation where I had X squared, and I know anytime I square something, it becomes positive. But if X squared equals negative one, you know, does our math world go into poo poo and be done? And, and well, no, if I take that, I get um, X equals the square root of negative one. So in order to continue with math, we get this whole idea of an imaginary number. And we use the letter I, you're all familiar with this, but just a quick review again, I equals the square root of negative one. If I squared it, that means I put parentheses around this and squared it, and the square takes care of the square root, and it's gonna in fact give me that negative one. So I is the square root of negative one, I squared is actually negative one, okay? So we are not allowed to work with square roots of negatives but we are allowed to work with I and go from there. So whenever you get a problem like, wow, square root of negative 16, do nothing until you convert that. And you know, hopefully that by now you remember negative one times 16 is a square, oh, oh don't wanna go that far, stop right there. Do, 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 I gotta know right now, square root of 16. And this is I, and that's four, and this guy becomes four I. Okay. So in our world of this, you know, we now that we have an imaginary number, we can come up with something that's called a complex number. And that's a number that has a real part and an imaginary part. Seven plus two I, negative 16 I, that would be plus zero. Four, that would be plus zero i. So all the numbers can be written as complex numbers. And somewhere along the line in fifth grade, parent night was coming up and they had you do this and dot, dot, dot. And you said, oh, that's the counting numbers because they're that's what we start with. And then we go like that. And then we added zero and you got the whole numbers and you spent like a week making up a really cool poster of this. And then we took all of their opposites negative one, negative two, negative three, dot, dot. And you got the integers. Did any of you do this way back when? No? Counting numbers? Doesn't play the bell. Counting numbers. Then you did the whole numbers. You did their opposite, which was the integers. Then you added all the decimals and, and you got the real numbers. You had this great chart of all the different number groups. And no, maybe they stopped doing that. But there was a time that everybody did that. Anyhow, okay. So if I gave you these problems and I said, I want you to take a couple of minutes and run through these on your own and see what you come up with. So I'm gonna pause the recording, give you about three minutes and see what you remember. That is negative 70 right there, okay? That is negative 70. Actually, let's make that a 20 because that would be more fun to work with. That's negative square root of 20. Pausing. All right, so let's go over some of these. We just found this first one. I don't know if we found it, it wasn't lost. We just calculated that first one to be four I. Using the same idea, again, you can't do anything with the square root of a negative until you change it to an I. And I took negative 20 and broke it up into negative one, four, and five. There's my I. There's a two, and I'm left with the square root of five. So a lot of times you'll see it written as two I square root of five. Same idea here, four I square root of three. Questions on the first three. Hopefully a lot of you are saying, yeah, I remember how to do this. This guy is I square root of six times I square root of 10. 
that's i squared. Now I can multiply these, square root of 60. And I think I can make that four times 15. So this becomes negative one. This is square root of four times 15. Square root of four is two. I think this guy ends up being negative two i square root of 15. Can I get a thumbs up? There we go. Can we have the negative two square 15? Yeah. Because Thank you. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm happy. I'm glad Chow's got a bat. Thanks, Chow. I, uh... We good? Yeah, I was just going to say, I got two I uh, squared 15. I think I missed the uh, one step. No, yeah, I missed that one step. Yeah, I and I is I squared. Yeah, that's what I missed. I squared of 20 over I squared of 2. I, 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 I's cancel. Square root of 20 over square root of 2. Square root of 10. So that's good work with imaginary numbers. Now we're going to up it a little bit to complex numbers. This guy becomes, I don't like using pencil. I'm going all the way and I'm going 10. Negative 8 plus, well, that's negative 8 over 4 plus this guy, square root of negative 128 over 4. And I can't do anything with him until I make him an I. I'm going to zoom in a little. This becomes negative 2. This becomes I squared of 128 over 4. Oh, let's see. I'm just going back factor tree. 128. Uh, 2 and 64. 2 and 32. Uh, 2 and 6. Oh, I get lots of 2s. In fact, I'm going to break this up into two, four, six, eight goes into that. Heck, it looks like 16 goes into that. In fact, 32 goes into that, but that doesn't do me any good. That's not a perfect square. So I'm thinking 16 times six. 16 times 8. Yeah, 16 times. Wait. Oh, I got a better one. Right? I'm looking at my perfect squares. 1, 2, 4, 9, 16, 25. No, 36, uh, 49, 64, right? 1 squared. I don't know what the 2 is. 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, because I want to make this a perfect square times something so I can take the square root. Looks like 64. 64 times 2. All right. Negative 2 plus 8i squared of 2 over 4. That's just going to become the, okay. Final answer. Yes. Negative 2 plus 2i squared of 2. One twenty-eight. I brought out the i. 64 times 2. Squared of 64 is 8. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Good. Good. I got, I now have a nice complex number, real part, imaginary part, good. Now, with the complex numbers, we can do operations. We can add them, we can subtract them, we can multiply them, and we can divide them. And you're going, yeah, buddy, I remember this. This is good, it's confidence builder. Real part and real part, one plus imaginary and imaginary combined to coefficients, two i, Please put this on the test. I know, right? I want it on the test. Dirty bit. 
right, let's let's see what we got here. Come on, camera. Here we go. I have five problems. I want to multiply them. I want to multiply them. I'm going to divide them. I got some stuff going on. I'm going to give you about three minutes. See what you remember. How many of these five can you do? Here we go. I don't know if you got to all of them yet. I don't know. Let's see what we have. Um, double distribute. Right? You guys learn foil, first, outer, inner, last. But we're double distributing two times. I get a six plus eight I minus nine I minus 12 I squared. This becomes negative one, which turns this term into a plus 12. Because negative one times a negative makes it a plus. Six and 18, I write the real part first, minus I. Being cautious, math class forever, I know I can't distribute a square root, so I write it as four plus three i, four plus three i. Same process, binomial times a binomial, 16 plus 12 i plus 12 i plus nine i squared. That i squared becomes a negative, so that's like minus nine. 16 minus nine is seven plus 24i. Questions? Any questions so far? Thank you, Gianni. I appreciate the thumbs up. That way I can, I know I'm not uh, like my volume didn't disappear or my screen froze. Give me a word here. Six plus five I, six minus five I, what are they? What's the term there? Are you talking about coefficients? Nope, nope. Huh. When I have the sum and a difference of the same terms, the product of a sum and a difference equals perfect squares, but the six minus five it's, I is 36 minus uh, it, yeah. 25. We'll, we'll check the answer in a second, but I was looking for this word. We were just about ready to play Wordle. I was looking for the word conjugate. Okay, let's see what happens up here. This guy becomes 36 minus 30i plus 30i minus 25i squared. i squared is negative one, turns this into plus 25. The great thing about the conjugate is the outer and the inner cancel. I'm left with 36, you're going, you're going, plus 25. And as Chow had put on the chat earlier, it is in fact 61. Just like when we were working with square roots, same kind of idea. I is actually a square root. It's just a special one. And why does that come into play? Well, if I get ready to do this problem, three plus two I, and I want to get the square root out of my denominator, I multiply numerator and denominator by its conjugate, five plus I and five plus I. In the numerator, 15 plus 3i plus 6i plus 2i squared, which I know I'm going to change that into a minus 2 because the i squared is negative 1 and bring it around. Denominator 25 plus 5i minus 5i minus i squared. Know this guy is going to turn into a plus one because minus negative one is a plus one. 15 minus two is 13 plus nine i. 
5 and negative 5 cancel, I get over 26. So technically, I need to write this as a complex number. 13 over 26 plus 9i over 26. Or, I mean, really, 1 half plus 9i over 26. Final answer. I got, I got um, one and a half plus uh, I over two. I don't know, I write, I write it wrong. Yeah, I have nine I here. Up here I have three I and six I. There's three I, uh-oh, three I and 10 I. This should be 13 I. I'm glad you're in this class. That makes this a 13 and six is 19 I. Yeah, I had 13 and 26 now. But I got 13 over 26 and 19 over 26. Going back up here and double check. 3i and 10i. 3i and 10. What is this? Oh, my goodness. 3 times 5 is 15. This is 3i. Oh, my goodness. This is 10i. So that means this, yeah, I stand corrected. That is also 13i. That's 13. That's 13. Ciao. Once again, you prevail. One half plus i over two. Algebra mistakes. People, you need to catch my algebra mistakes a long time ago. Don't trust me. <laughs> 15 plus 3i plus 10i. 13i, 13i over 26, like Chow said, is i over 2. This is like a fun game for Chow. I keep screwing up and she catches my mistakes. No, and nobody, everybody's just like, I right, keep going. Uh, i is a square root, so I need to multiply. I'm going to go by i. This guy becomes 3i over i squared, 3i over negative 1, negative 3i. OK, that's an algebra lesson. That's an algebra lesson. Some of you are going, but this is trig class. Well, this is one of those building blocks that you learned that about an algebra that is needed here in trig. And, you know, it didn't hurt for us to go back because I found over time there are a lot of students who need brush, brushing up on that algebra concept. Okay, so back into some trig stuff. Section 8.2. I'm excited. I like 8.2. I like 8.3 as well. So we have um, complex numbers like we've just been talking about, but we can take those and turn them into what's called trigonometry form, trigonometric form. Or another word is you're going to hear is polar form. Okay. Taking a look at my new Cartesian coordinate system over here, I'm going to take my complex number and write it as a real axis. I come over two and an imaginary axis. I go up three and I'm able to plot this point two plus three i. And in doing so, I'm now able to make a connection between a complex number and everything we've been doing in trig. Okay? Everything we've been doing in trig. Okay, I have an example here. I'm not sure what's going on. Find the sum of six minus two i and negative four minus three i. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is plot this, one, two, three, four, five, six, and two i. So there's my first point, six minus two i. My second point is negative four, one, two, three, four negative three. 
There's my second point negative four minus three i. And I say, find the sum. Well, okay, we've just did a little work with that. Six minus two i plus negative four minus three i. I get two minus five i. Minus two bananas plus minus three bananas is minus five bananas. Let's see what happens. Two one, two, one, two, three, four, five. I get something that looks like down here. Hmm. Hmm. And now I go back and I fix this error because this is six minus two i instead of six plus. Man, two, four, six. I got something that looks like that. My mistake again. 6 minus 2i. I'm glad the book company doesn't want to want to buy this or anything from me. So we get something that looks like that. Two points, there's some. I can put them all on a graph and it's going to lead into something we're going to talk about shortly. Kind of easy, almost kind of a dumb problem. Don't know if I'll use that one again. Okay. So this is really our trig stuff. Here's my real axis. Here's my imaginary axis. And I go and I plot a point, x plus 2i. Boom, it sits right there. What we just did a minute ago, x plus 2i, great. So you notice we look, we're taking a math concept, complex numbers, and we're putting it on the Cartesian coordinate system. Now we're gonna be able to do all kinds of work with it. And this is work that we've seen before. If I want to calculate the x part, the x is down here. If I'm given r and theta, x equals r cosine theta. Where does that come from? If I said the cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and I swing that r around, I get x equals r cosine theta. Same with the y. Sine of theta would be y over r, but if I bring the r over. So what I'm starting to see here is if I'm given r and I'm given theta, I can find where I end up, the x and y value. This is a piece to the puzzle that we're going to see in some stuff I think is cool is coming up. Vice versa. If I know x and y, of course I can find the hypotenuse. And if I, you know, again, know theta, or if I know x and y, excuse me, I can always find theta. So up here, I was given r and theta. Here, I was given x and y. And I'm able to find those relationships. Okay. I don't get any of some good stuff. The trig form, again, what's again, it's called polar form of a complex number is a plus y, I, uh, excuse me, of the complex number x plus y i is. And all of a sudden I'm thinking r cosine theta plus r i sine theta, right? This is x from up above, x is r cosine theta. Y is R, but this time when I want to put it in complex number, I have I sine theta. Again, this is X plus Y I. Okay, so if I said, what is X? From up above, if I said, what is X? You'd say, hey, that's R cosine theta. If I said, what is Y? What is Y? Well, I need to include that imaginary. I'd say R sine theta. Okay, this is my x plus y i. So I'm taking this complex number and I'm putting it in a trig form. I'm putting it in a trig form. And in doing so, I can say, hey, they both have r's. So really, this is r cosine theta plus 
I sine theta, because I put the R out front. And then I go, well, okay, yeah. And mathematicians have decided to shorten this to R, and it's going to be written as CIS theta. CIS theta. It's short for cosine of theta plus I sine of theta. It's just way, the way mathematicians like to run it or write it, excuse me. So a complex number written in trig form would be this R C I S theta. Boring, I know, this part's a little, little slow, a little slow. So that means if I was given six plus two I, I'm gonna be able to write that in a trig form. I'm gonna be able to take this six plus two I, transform it into this because I know what X is, I, I'm gonna and end up with something that's called trig form. Now, if, well, before we get there, which is what's written here, I don't like the way it's written here. I got this a little bit better. X plus YI, the X was R cosine of theta, the Y was R sine of theta, but I get the I in there. Pull the R's out, R cosine theta, I say, well, uh -oh, all of a sudden, we have another name for R. <laughs> We just called it the magnitude the other day. Today, we're calling it the absolute value, which is kind of an interesting name, or modulus. So again, that hypotenuse, when we were dealing with vectors, was called a magnitude. Now that we're dealing with polar form or trig form, it's called the absolute value or the modulus. The other thing I have going on here, we actually give theta a name for the first time. It's the argument. So this trig form, R cosine theta, I sine theta, has a modulus and an argument. All right, here we go. Well, let's go backwards first. This is leading up to what we're going to do on Wednesday. I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, express this guy, which is trig form, in rectangular form. Uh, where did you come from? Where did you go? Uh, okay. So this is polar or trig form. I want to make it rectangular form. That's that A plus BI. That's my complex number. Well, I'm not sure, but I'm going to write this out. Two cosine 300 degrees plus two I sine of 300 degrees. So I'm taking this polar form and I want to rewrite it in rectangular form, my coordinate system. Oh, I know, I know 300. That makes this 60. Agreed? This is 30, so it's 1 negative square root of three and two by location. Ah, this becomes two times the cosine, it's one half, plus two I the sine, negative square root of three over two, one plus I, ooh, let's see, there's a negative in there. So I'm gonna make this minus. One minus, square roots cancel, I square root of three. Huh. Huh. Trig form, two CIS 300. I wrote it out and converted it to rectangular form. All righty. 
express this rectangular form in trig form. Okay, that in trig form means I want that whole um, RCIS theta. That's trig form, right? That's what we started with up there. So uh, when I'm looking at this, I'm saying, hey now, hey now, I need to calculate R and I need to calculate theta. Oh boy. Oh, that's not so bad. I know this. I just had a formula, right? So when in doubt, draw the triangle. Negative square root of three this way. That's a positive one that way. And, and I'm looking at something that looks like this. That's a positive one. That's a negative square root of three. And I'm going, okay, there's my triangle. If I need an intrigue form, I need to calculate R and I need to calculate theta. R equals the square root of this squared, which is one, plus this squared is three, R equals two. Huh, I just got excited about that. Now I need to find theta. Tangent of theta equals one over negative square root of three, which, you know, normally I'd be putting in my calculator, but I don't have to because I know exactly what theta is. Theta is, well, there's a 30 degree. What's theta? What got me there? Theta is? It's, uh, it's square root of three over, minus square root of three over three. No, oh, no. I want the uh, angle measure. Yeah. Uh, if 30 is my reference, what angle got me to that 30 reference there? 150. Excellent, 150. Final answer is R two CIS one hundred and fifty degrees. I'm thinking we're going to do two more of these. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. I want to start with a trig form four CIS. Uh, let's see two twenty five. And then I, we're gonna make that into rectangular form. Then I'm gonna start with a rectangular form, one minus four I, turn that into the trig form. So let's pause. All right, so let's see what's going on in this first one. Lots of big words were being used. But if I look at this, I know I'm given R, R is four, and I'm given theta. Theta is 225 degrees. Well, if I'm given R and theta, my options are to find X and Y. What are the values for X and Y? Over here, I know I'm given X and Y. X equals one, Y equals negative four, and you know, this time I need to come up with R and theta. So it's almost like you look at it and say, well, given the polar form convert to it, okay, yeah. And given a rectangular form, uh, but I'm just simply writing down, I'm given R and theta, calculate X and Y. If I write this guy out, this was four cosine of 225 degrees plus four I, sine of 225 degrees. Okay, yeah. Fortunately, I know the cosine of 225. If I did not, I'd have to use a calculator. Yeah, I do know, yes, four times. Uh, cosine of 225. Oh, this is a square root of two, excuse me. Negative one over the square root of two. Four I, this is also negative one over the square root of two. Negative four over the square root of two. I'm gonna do a little work before I go back to that. That's negative four square root of two over two, negative two square root of two. 
rationalize the denominator. Square root of two square root of three. Da, 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 da. Four, good. Negative two square root of two plus negative two i square root of two. And going back, given oh, a little bit more, given r and theta, the other two pieces of the puzzle are x and y. So if I'm given r and theta, chances are, yep, I need to find x and y. So I can write it in, ooh, excuse me, rectangular form. Over here, I'm given x and y. I need to calculate. Yeah, r was the square root of, and again, that was. That's just simply me going one and negative four. What's the hypotenuse? One squared is one, that squared is 16. I get the square root of 17. Nice. Tan tangent of theta equals y over x. Because here's theta, y over x. Uh oh, yeah, this time uh, theta equals the inverse tan of negative four. Oh boy. On Mr. Calculator, let's see. The inverse tan of a negative four equals, oh, theta equals negative 75.96. That's not a six. Six four degrees. I'm going to do 360 minus that. Two hundred eighty four degrees. All right, so now I'm all I have my theta square root of seventeen C I S. 284.036 degrees. Woohoo! And again, if I wanted to check it, I would take the square root of 17 times the cosine of that, and I better get one. If I took cosine or square root of 17 times the sine of that, I should get negative four. Quick and easy way to check your work. All right, so building blocks. We started with complex numbers. A little review from algebra. We jumped over here and we're starting to do these trig forms, these polar forms. Okay, I'm given the number negative three and I'm going, okay, no, wait a minute. That's zero minus three I. If I look at it that way, I need to put it in trig form. Again, I, I'm given X is zero, Y is negative three. I'm betting if I'm going to trig form, I need to calculate r and theta. r and theta. r would be the square root of 0 squared plus negative 3 squared. 0 and 9 is 9 squared. I get r is 3. My final answer is going to be 3 cis. That. I'm going to make this easy on myself. I'm going to draw a triangle. X is zero, Y is negative three. It's kind of an odd location, but what degree measure got me there? What's my theta? 270. Excellent, 270 degrees. Nice. Very good. Six CIS 125, I don't know what that is. Six cosine of 125 degrees plus six I sine of 125 degrees. I need to do this one on the calculator because I have no idea what the cosine of 125 degrees is. Six. Not looking like this. So if it has a red line going through. I don't think that was for me. 
six, cosine 125 degrees, I get negative 3.441. Negative 3.441 plus I times six times the sine of 125 degrees. 4.915, 4 4.915, 4.915. Ah, nice. I checked that on a calculator. Uh, negative three, one, two, three ish over there, up to about five ish. I'm looking at something like that. Uh, 125 degrees. Yeah, that's past there. That's about right. And if this is three and that's five, yeah, I think I like that answer. My estimation skills. Again, I was given R, I was given theta, I needed to come up with X and Y. I'm given X, I'm given Y, I need to find R. What is R? Square root of? 41. 41, nice. And it looks like tangent of theta is going to be negative four over five. Theta is, again, I'm gonna draw some triangle stuff here. I, I'm going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. I know I better be down in there somewhere. So the theta is gonna be negative, yeah, negative four over five. Inverse tan, second tan, that gets me the inverse. Negative four divided by five. To fix the microphone for you, but we can also do that manually by just going to audio settings. So that's what I'm going to do. It's a little bit easier for me to show. So basically, what this will do is give us more visibility into. I think somebody's multitasking today. I get negative 38. Yeah, that's good. My degrees, theta is going to be negative 38.8. Six six zero, yeah, that looks about right. I'm happy with that. Again, I could go three hundred and sixty, okay, and then minus that there, so plus that answer, and that's going to give me three hundred and twenty one degrees. All right, so now I write it as square root of forty one c i s. 321.340 degrees. I like it. I like it. It's not the most exciting stuff, but it's kind of neat that I can go from one form to the other. Now, this, this whole new trig form, 6 CIS 125, now that we've learned the basics of how to work with it, on Wednesday, we're going to take this to another level. We're going to be working with this polar form, aka trig form, and going from there. Okay. That's all I have for today. It was a bit. It was 8 1 and 8 2. I will remind everyone again. Get assignment four printed out and start chipping away at it. Do a problem here, do a problem there. As we cover it, you, you can be um, filling that out. It's a way of almost kind of taking notes. Waiting till the last minute doesn't work for most people. Really, really doesn't.